this video I'm going to show you how to add your own text, whether it be a monogram, a name or other wording, to a binder cover. So I'm Rachel from All About The House. If you type in All About The House on Etsy or www.allaboutthehouseprintables.com.au I have a whole bunch of planning type printables including printable planners, planner stickers, a whole heap of um, different types of products. So in this video I'm going to show you how to customize one of my binder covers. So I have lots of different types of binder covers. If you purchase one of these binder cover sets, you can add your own monogram or you can add your own text. So it comes with an editable PDF file where you can add a monogram in this uh, font or style of monogram, a three letter or a one letter. Or I also include a JPEG file format, which means you can add your own text. You can choose any font style that you want. If you want to use a cursive font or just a simple font, you can add multiple lines of text. You can use binder covers for so many different things. You can use them for organizing your schoolwork, your business, your blog, your recipes, your household binder, um, your important documents, medical information, taxes, heaps of different types of uses for binder covers. And making them editable means that you can add a different title to each of the covers if you want to use them for a different use later on or you want all your recipes to be in polka dots but you want your household binder to have stripe style. Um, so there's heaps of different uses for binder covers. So once you purchase, you receive an instant download with the files, then save the files to your computer. So to add your own text, you can use any sort of image editing software. I use and recommend Pink, PicMonkey, which is free and it's online. So if you go to PicMonkey.com and then choose Edit and then go Computer, then navigate to where you have the file saved on your computer and you want to choose the JPEG. So I'm going to use the Chevron, so I love Chevrons, the Chevron cover for this example and then select OK. The binder cover will then open in PicMonkey and you can add your own text. So if you go to the T's over here which is the text option and then you can choose any sort of font that you want. If it's got this little crown next to it that means it's a paid, uh, paid font so you have to pay to use that one or you can use one of these free ones. I love that font, that Didact Gothic. Um, the one I used in this sample images here is Century Gothic. Um, Overlock's a nice one, but I'm going to go with Rocket today. And you can also choose from fonts that you have on your computer as well, or search if you want a certain type of font, and then click Add Text. So now we've got um, where we can enter in our text. So if you wanted to, you could add a name, or you could do recipes. Let's go with um, Emily's school binder. So now I can add multiple lines of text if I want. You can fill this whole thing with 10 lines of text. You can change the font um, style if you don't like that one. You can change the font color. So to change the font color, just press Control A and it will highlight all of your text and then you can change the color using the little color wheel at the top. So it's currently in white. You can see what it is up here. Um, don't think yeah, it will let you type in what sort of color. This is the six digit hexadecimal code, which can be letters and or numbers. So white is six F's and black is six zeros. So when you're happy with the color, I'm going to align it to the center. So now I've got my text in the center. You can make your text bold or not, increase and decrease the size quite easily. And then we want to obviously put this on top of the frame. So if we move it, we can. That's right. So deselect the text by clicking off your text section and then left click and then drag it upwards. So we now got our text in the center box. I'm just going to move the a little to the left. Left click and drag until you're happy with how it looks on your cover. So if I wanted to, I could make the name bigger. So again, just click on your text and increase the size. I only want to make Emily bigger, so I'm going to just click on Emily and then increase that. And then if you wanted to add more space in between, you can just press enter. Just play around with it until you're happy with how it looks. So I'm happy with that. I always use white because I've used a white frame border and white as part of the design elements. If I used this teal color, it might not stand out as nicely against this colored frame, so I always recommend using white. I'm just going to make that a smidge smaller again, just a little bit. 
Alrighty, so when you're happy with your text, you can then save it. So just press save, and then save it as a JPEG for printing. This is the file name that I've named the file. So 29 and 81 refers to the colors that I've used, my own personal internal color code. So if you're wondering when you come to the listing and it's got these colors, that's just what it means. If you want to um, color match things, so I've got other binder covers that are green and pink and I've used the same pink in them as this pink. So if you wanted to purchase multiple sets and then mix and match some of them, um, just look for the color codes that I've added and then you can mix and match. For example, that uses the same pink as this set does. If you wanted to use just stripe and you wanted blue and green stripe. So anyway, you can rename that to whatever you want to call it. You can call it just what you've typed in, so Emily's School Binder. Leave it as a JPEG and then you can change what um, type of quality. I always go with Sean or Sean, however you pronounce that, because we always want a large file size which will keep the pattern nice and crisp with no blurred edges. It's going to be a high quality file. And then you can save it to your computer when it's finished loading. Just go save it to your computer and put it wherever that you want to save it on your computer and then just select save. So that's how you would add text to the cover, but what if you wanted to add a monogram? You can also click download and just choose image if you want to see how it looks. So there's our finished product and then you can go print. I've got a detailed uh, blog post with printing tips so just choose your printer um, I recommend Canon printers and then you can change your page size um, choose high quality I recommend printing binder covers on photo paper or glossy sticker paper which will really make the colors pop you can also print it on cardstock and then laminate for extra durability you can use it as a cover or you could add the 12 months of the year in the title box to make um, monthly dividers I also have editable binder tabs in my shop. I'll add a link um, below this video. And you can, if you wanted to not have a letter size, if you wanted just a half letter size or a different size, you can change it over here. And then just go print when you're happy with it. You can also change the page size up here. Um, so there's lots of different options. You don't just have to print it at letter size. So that's how you would print it when you've got your finished product. If I come back, I can also add a monogram instead of just text. So if you wanted to, you can go add text again with whatever font style that you want. Um, Trajan or Trajan, however you pronounce it, Pro is a good font for monograms. They've got lots of nice ones. Um, this Budmo Jiggler is a good one for binder covers. And there's a good font. Where is it? Let's search it. Let's try yours. There we go. So Trudgeon Pro is a really good font style that I like to use for monograms. So if we add that to our template, it's going to cooperate. And then just type in your first letter, which might be an R. If you press Control A, you can then change it to white and then increase the size. So I don't need this Emily school binder anymore, so I'm just going to delete that. So now I've got an R. Times New Roman is also good if you want to do monograms. If you don't like the monogram style of this monogram style, which you can customize using the PDF, you can create your own monogram using PicMonkey. So I've got R, and that should have changed to white. Cool, it's white. Okay, so I've got my first monogram. I can then add a, another monogram. So the one bad thing about PicMonkey is you can't easily just copy the text. You'll have to add text again manually over here. So if we make the middle one W or whatever letter that you want it to be, you can make a single letter monogram, two letter or a three letter. White. And I'm just going to bump that up again. The middle letter should usually be the biggest one, and the middle letter should be your last name. So monogram convention is first, last, middle. 
So my first name is Rachel, so that's an R, W for my last name, and then I'm going to add my middle initial, or if I wanted to, I could just leave it as a two-letter monogram, tweak it on your canvas, and might want to reduce the size. So if I make that 600, I can make this one 600. And then now the same size, if you wanted RW, you could also add a dot in between if you wanted to. You can customize it that way, but I want to do a three letter monogram, so I'm just going to delete that dot. Whoops. And I want to add my last letter initial, or my middle name. It's Jane, so if I go with J, just control A, and change it to white, and I can bump it up to, if I go with 400 for the left and right sides, and then I'll leave the center as 600, so make this one 400. Cool, so if I just left click and drag to reposition these on my canvas, I can create a three letter monogram. I want that to be more in the center, so I'm move that one down a bit. Oops. I do personally prefer to use the PDF, which is already um, pre formatted for a three letter monogram but you can create your own if you don't like this font style here. So play around with it until you're happy with how it looks if you want the W to be more in the center. The J at that font size is a bit big because ideally you want your first letter and your last letter to be the same size. So if you press Control A, you can tweak it a bit. So if we make it 350, that'll make it more of the same size. I might tweak it again to 325. It does take longer if you do this manually than if you just use the PDF which is already pre-formatted. So now you can add a monogram that way. So my favorite fonts to add a monogram like this is Trajan or Trajan Pro, Times New Roman, and another one is uh, what's called Rockwell. Yeah, Rockwell. That one's another good one to add a monogram as well. So make sure that you've got smaller letters for your first and your middle, and then a bigger letter for your last name. So that is how you add your own text to one of my binder covers. It's the same process to save this one as we did for the text. Um, remember that when you purchase and launch, you can um, use the same templates again and again. So you can create an unlimited number of binder covers or dividers or planner covers, etc. You can print this at home. You can take the file to a print shop. I've got a print release form on my website if they ask for it. Places like Staples, I think um, my customers have said that they request to see that. Uh, before they will print the file for you. You can also upload this file to um, the Erin Condren website if you want to get a custom planner cover printed with your name on it, um, which looks like this instead of using one of their covers. Um, you can do heaps of different things with binder covers. Um, I'll leave that one up to you. So I hope you found this video tu um, tutorial helpful. If you've got any questions, just comment below.